Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Vancouver Rain Draft Glory franchise mode here in MLB The Show 23. So in the last episode, we basically uh, had our draft and it wasn't the best draft at all. We uh, didn't really make a good selection. The uh, draft in general wasn't that good. Like you can see our first pick that we drafted... Uh, he's okay, but he's not going to be an insane player. He's got a low potential, which is not great, but the starting overall is pretty solid, so I think he's still going to be a decent player for us in, like, a number five or a number four role, something like that, depending on how much money we spend on our pitchers and stuff like that in the future. But, uh, yeah, obviously this draft class was just not that good. We obviously got some a couple of good steals in terms of potential-wise. Like, all these players might make the majors, which is good, but... Some of them are a long ways away, especially Felipe Torres, as you can see, he's a 43 at 18, but he does have 90 potential, so at least we're finding some gems, but we definitely need to drafts to actually start being better, because they have been pretty terrible up to this point. Like, there has been a couple good drafts, but most of them, for example, have been pretty bad. Like, the first year draft, I was looking back at it, uh, the guy that went third overall is a 69 overall and he's like 28, I'd say, and he's like deep potential. So, yeah, there has been some pretty bad drafts in the past. So, hopefully, we finally get one of those ones where we could draft a really good player in. I'd say our best draft that we've had in this franchise mode is probably the draft that we took Sixto, third overall, I believe, because he was the best player from that draft class. I can't remember what draft that was. That might have been like year two or year four, somewhere around there. I'm not 100% sure of that. But when we drafted, like, say, Pip first overall, that was kind of a bad pick in a sense. We could have probably found some other players, but it is what it is. So there is that, and there was our draft. But anyways, before we get into assembling the rest of the season, getting some more contract extensions done, and getting through an entire offseason, I do have a couple comments to go over. So the first one is from Krazig. He says, find a more efficient scout to replace our Moss. So... That's likely what we are going to do to start off this episode, because I believe I could already address that. Um, yes, I can. We're probably going to rework this a little bit, because obviously we don't have all the budget in the world to put towards our scouts. We only have like $200,000, I think, a year. So we probably want to make this a little bit better, but we'll definitely find a better efficient scout than our Moss. And we'll probably try our new scouting method in next episode as well. And then the last two comments are from Nick Bacher, Barons OC. The first one says, Got to fire whoever scouted the pitcher. You picked one. He has worse potential in overall than he was supposed to be, but he will be a starter like fourth or fifth starter, which is what I was just saying. And uh, yeah, we definitely got to fire this Armas guy. Just didn't do what he was brought in to do. He was only brought in for this first season, I think, because I think we did replace him, if I'm not mistaken. Like, the other two are really good in terms of efficiency and also good at positional players, so I do really like those scouts. But to find a, another solid scout at $80,000, it's probably going to be hard, but we're definitely going to look and see if there's any ones out there. And then the last comment from Nick says, this might be the worst draft I have ever seen, and I tend to agree it was just not a good draft for most teams. Like, I don't know if there was really much A potential players in this draft, so... Hopefully we get some good drafts because, like I said, we could start building up our team a little bit better that way. But let's look for a scout replacement for our Moss first before we get to the offseason so we can only sign one that's making $80,000 or less. Is there a better option out there in terms of efficiency and stuff like that? No, there is not. No, there is not. This guy is much better at positional players. Oh, they're all not that good at 80000 I feel like I should be probably getting rid of uh, Montero. I know he's really good of a scout, but we're not going to be able to afford ourselves a better secondary scout or third scout. Like, we want to find ourselves a scout. Like, let's see, is there anyone that's actually worth bringing in? Like, we want to have another 5,000 available to bring in somebody. Not like this guy. This guy's not good at pitchers. Uh, we want efficient. And this guy might be a better option, but seven thousand dollars more. Seven thousand dollars more would mean we'd have to get rid of Montero, and then we'd have to find another efficient player, one for around the same price or less money. Because basically, we have how much money towards? We have three hundred million actually. Never mind. I, I or not three hundred million. Three hundred thousand towards scouts. So technically, let me do some math here before we get into this rest of the season. 
Um, so technically, we are paying 110 at the moment. If we were to sign this guy, we'd be paying 87.8 to him, which would put us at 197,800. Um, so technically, we'd have only um, we'd have 102,000 dollars to spend on the last scout, which means we'd be able to bring in somebody. Like this Drew Ruzon guy, who's actually pretty good as well. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to get rid of Montero, bring in Ruzon. It's going to save us some cap. And then we're going to bring in that other guy as well. Which I honestly just forget his name now. Was it France? No, I don't know. If it, no, was it France? No, it was the 87th guy. It was John Coe. Is this guy at least he has efficiency? He's better at pitching, uh, pitching wise than our Moss by a long shot. His discovery is better. His positional player is not so much, but I think we will bring in Code to replace our Moss, and we will get rid of one of our best scouts in Montero, just because I do need to be a little bit more better with our budget in a sense. So, so we will bring in Ruzan to replace Montero. How do I get rid of him? Come on, I want to get rid of him. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. So there is one change. And then we need to get rid of our Moss to bring in the 87,000 John Co. And there we go. Now we are we have still $500 in budget technically, but there we go. I think that's a better scouting setup because now we have a guy that's a bit more efficient. He's not the best scout still in the world. Don't get me wrong. He's still going to make mistakes, but he is better than what we are having in that one guy in our Moss. We do have to get rid of one of our better scouts, but we bring in another scout that's actually pretty good in terms of being like balanced. Like he's good positional player wise, still good pitcher wise, good efficiency. I think our scouting staff looks a lot better, and we still have money as well, which is good. So there is that. I think that will definitely set up our scouts uh, for future success. Hopefully, we just got to figure out who's going to be the scout that's uh, generally scouting or doing discovery scout, uh, scouting for pitchers for like three weeks at a time in each region and who's going to be the positional player scouts for next season. But uh, let's uh, get these contract extensions with the younger guys out of the way, I think, already. Let's see. Two more. He's got three more years of barbs, so I can take Dennis Lake a little bit longer if I want to. Let's just get a couple of these out of the way because some of these guys are important to the future of this team. So let's uh, do a good old uh, $5 million for Dennis. He wants more money. I might have to wait till the offseason on some of these guys, which is okay. There you go. I'm going to wait till the offseason on McAllister and also on Cardenas because I want to sign uh, Cardenas long term. Schneider obviously is not going to cost a lot. Let's wait till the rest of the offseason on the rest of those guys. Make it a little bit easier for us. So let's uh, get the rest of the season finished and see how our young guys, including like Howe and Sixto, finish off the year because those two guys have been unreal this season. So hopefully they have a good rest of the way. So we'll start off by following Double A to the end of their season, and we'll take a look at the Double A stats and see how good some of our players did down there. And then we'll take a look, obviously, at Triple A as well while we're at it. But yeah, hopefully uh, Double A. Hopefully we got some good uh, growth from some of the guys in Double A, and now Pip has been injured again with his sprained knee for one to two weeks. Yeah, Pip is uh, an injury concern. He gets injured way too frequently, and now Sixto has injured his hand. He broke his hand for one to two months, so his season's done. That's very unfortunate considering the years he has been having has been really great, but he breaks his hand, and now there's a fractured hand for one of our top pitcher prospects. I don't know why the injuries are so crazy in this game. I feel like every single day there's a new injury. Our double-A team is actually doing really well. Like, they won a lot of games down the stretch. We do need to call up players to our MLB team, so let's call up a few players. Probably call up just the worst overall guys, because I honestly don't care at this point. Uh, let's call up Casilla. Just because I don't want to lose players on waivers. Let's call up Briggs. And we need one more. Let's call up Rufus because we always call up Rufus. So there you go. We'll call those guys up. I could call up top prospects and stuff like that. But right now I'm not too focused on that because I know we're still not a good enough team really. Uh, let's auto on that. 
27 and 42. I believe that's one of the best seasons Double A has had yet. There are 15 games back of the playoffs still, but they still had a really good month before they fell apart. Let's take a look at Double A stats because this should be interesting. So Bobby Hyde, one of our better pitcher prospects, up to a 72 at 19. He started 28 games, had a 3.97 ERA, which is pretty good. 14 quality starts in 28 games, so half of his starts were good ones. I do like that. He might be in Triple A next season. I think he probably will be. Uh, Ray McMahon, really good season for Ray. Ray is very intriguing. He might be a future shortstop for the MLB team. 68 at 22. Good amount of home runs. Well, not really a whole lot of home runs, but good RBIs, good average. OPS is solid, and war is okay. So that's good. He was also an all-star, it looks like, I think. Uh, who else do we have for prospects? Barbori, 11-7, and 7, a 3-2 ERA, and a 131 whip. Also started 28 games and had 17 quality starts. It's pretty good. Good stuff, Sbarbori. Uh, Silva, who got injured, was 4-10. and 10. He was not posting good stats, it looks like, but was he good? 24 games started, and he had only 4 quality starts, so not a good start for Pablo Silva's career, but he is developing, so that's good, but I don't know how good of a player he's going to end up being. So there's that. Delmon Rangel, 8-8 eight and eight with a 4.44 and a 1.47. Let's take a look at his stats. He didn't start any games. He was being used as a reliever, looks like. Hmm, maybe he'll be using him as a starter next year. Uh, Norman Pena, not really that good stats, but this guy is a deep potential, so don't expect him to develop much, but he's a 63 at 18, so that's at least good. Maybe he'll turn into a C potential player. Uh, Brad Thornton, the catcher that we drafted last year, in his first season, 20 home runs, 68 RBIs, which is pretty impressive on that front. Average-wise and OPS-wise, not so much, but that's not a bad first season for Brad Thornton. Uh, Ron Francisco, pretty terrible-looking ERA and terrible whip as well. Not a good win-loss ratio, but uh, 26 games started, only five quality starts. So a couple guys definitely struggled. Uh, Carlos Murillo, 5-11, 362 ERA, 138 whip. He started four games because I guess he was used as a reliever sometimes. He had one quality start. I guess that's okay. Uh, Darren Ponce, really solid numbers as a uh, relief pitcher. Maybe he's a closer actually down there. I don't know. Yeah, I think he might be getting used as a closer because of that save category, which is okay. He seems to be a decent closer. Uh, William Halpern was not good this year. He is still a long shot from making it to the MLB. I don't even know if he ever does because he's a 57 at 21. Like if he was 18, still would be okay, but 21 in that low. Not really liking that. And Seguera, not the best season. 54 at 23 is a B potential. I don't think he's ever going to make it too. Like a couple of these guys are major long shots. So there is double A. Let's finish triple A's season. See how good the triple A team did. And they finish off. Let's go auto on that. They finished 41 in 109. 41 in 109. Let's take a look at Triple A's stats. So Ken Robert was really good as a closer. Looks like ERA wise and whip. He is pretty much ready for the majors. So I think he's going to be in the MLB team next year as maybe a setup guy or a closer. Who knows? Actually, Dennis Lake's probably going to be the closer for this team. So Robert's probably going to be a setup guy. He was pretty good. Pretty good numbers. Uh, Luis Guzman probably will still have another year at least in triple. But he's getting close. He was pretty good as well this year. But then again, closers usually do good. Darren Poles, up to a 74 at 19 as a C potential guy. Uh, how good is he? 30 games started and he had 10 quality starts. One every three games. That's not bad for a C potential guy. I don't know if he should be in the MLB next season or not. Because he doesn't have a huge potential, but he's got a good overall for his age. So he might be an intriguing player. Either he did incredibly terrible or the team did incredibly terrible around him. But 30 games started. ERA is not that great. Whip is not that great. 14 quality starts though. So half of his games were good starts. So I guess he just was very unlucky. Uh, Sammy Gomez, one of our better pitcher prospects, 71 at 18 now. His incredible mustache. He started 14 games because we were using him as a reliever and then I changed him over 
Eight quality starts. That's not bad. More than half of the games. Fletcher Hoffman still not going to become much of anything, but he is actually getting close to being maybe an MLB player, but he doesn't have good stats that he probably won't succeed at the MLB level. He might end up getting taken randomly in like the Rule 5 draft, but we do have, I think, him on our 40-man. Yeah, we do have him on our... No, we don't have him on our 40-man, do we? No, we do have him. I could have probably called him up, but I didn't want to. Uh, Kenny Ol Olinger, pretty good stats. It looks like 30 games started for him. 14 quality starts. Uh, Josh Groves, not really that good, but he was injured a lot of the year. Up to a 65 at 21 is not bad, though. So that's good news. Uh, what else we got here for prospects? Kellen Berger, he's a... F oh, oh, that sucks. He was a D potential, jumped to a C potential. Now he's jumped back down to a D potential. Uh, that's unfortunate. I was hoping this guy would have a solid career in AAA, but it turns out his potential just went right back down to where it was. That's unfortunate. Uh, Michael Chu... Up to a 58 at 21. Yeah, a lot of these guys are big long shots, but I hope that most of them make it. So there is AAA. Let's get the rest of the MLB season done, where we've been actually winning a decent amount of games here. We will finish off the season on a major winning streak, it looks like. Yep, we finished off the season 55 and 107. That is not that bad. If I do go to... Uh, I don't want to go to the LA, or the other team's uh, standings and schedule. I wanted to actually go to uh, my spreadsheet for a second because I do have, I did start writing down the team record. So this might be our most successful season yet. And if I'm right, that'd be nice. Let's see. This is tied for the most wins we've had in the season. This is the exact same record we had last season. So we are starting to win more games, which is good. So back-to-back 50-win -back seasons, I'd call that a success. And hopefully next season's even better than that. Hopefully we could hit like 60 wins next year. That'd be great. Let's take a look at our player stats, starting off with our right fielders, I guess. And we'll go to pitchers last because obviously we want to see about Garth Howe. But Bill O'Donnell finishes with 16 home runs and 67 RBIs, a 251 average. Not bad. That's his career best. So I do like that a lot from Bill O'Donnell. He's also one of those guys that uh, helps us on the base paths in terms of stealing. He's up to a 71 now too, which is good. So he is still developing a decent amount. But how much steals did he have? 24 steals. Pretty good. We get over to our center fielders. Ollie Gelman, 11 home runs, 66 RBIs at 237 average. He is also developing, which is good. His potential, was it always an A? Yeah, I think his potential always was an A actually. Never mind. But he is starting to finally hit a little bit of a stride. He sold 21 bases this year. Had 41 doubles. Damn. Yeah, he's a very speedy player. He will be very useful in terms of like playoff scenarios. When we want guys to steal bases or just get a lot of extra base hits. Um, Giancarlo Sixto, who was injured at the middle point or near the end of the season. Up to a 93 at 23. And obviously he had his best year yet. Home run wise, RBI wise, not as much because he missed the last 30 something games. But the same batting average as last year and a much better OPS. That slugging percentage is great. I do like that quite a bit. Great year from Sixto. Unfortunately, he got injured, or else he would have had probably closer to a career high in RBIs. But there is Sixto. Steiner was optioned back down to AAA, it looks like, which is interesting. I didn't do that, but the game did. Actually, we didn't use any minor league options, so it must have been right at the end of the season. But he's up to a 72 at 23, so he's developing good batting average, good OPS in his first season. So, do like that a lot from Steiner. We head over to our short stops. Uh, the guy that we took in the uh, Rule 5 draft, Buster Cross, not very good. Not developing either, so that's okay. George Pinheiro, though, on the other hand, is up to a 71 at 23. So we are getting some development from those guys that we need to get development from. I like that quite a bit. We over to third base. Uh, Pip. Oof. He's up to an 82 at 22. So at least he's developing. But man, did that average is just not good. I do not like that average quite a bit. Pip is not doing too well. It could be the injuries from a couple years ago though. Because he did have that long-term injury. 
Uh, Steve Schneider's up to a 78 now, so he's developing out of nowhere, which is good. 15 home runs, 51 RBIs. Still don't like his batting average either. So these guys need to be a bit more disciplined. Uh, Trevino batted in 247 this year. Definitely a downfall from last year for him, I think. Yeah, a worse season for him in his second year, but 81 and 20. He is developing, so that's good. Hopefully he has a better season next year. Uh, Fletcher Hoffman actually did get called up by the AI. He didn't play any games, which is funny, but still. Um, and we don't care about Ben Gelman. Ozzy Cardenas, probably one of the most consistent guys on his team. 22 home runs, 68 RBIs, and a 275 average, which is his best average since a few years ago. It's pretty good. A career high in home runs, almost a career high in RBIs as well. It was almost also a career high in OPS. And it was very close also to being a career high in war. So very good year for Cardenas. And we definitely need to sign him quite long term in the offseason if we can. Um, the rest of those players don't matter. Same with these guys. Dennis Lake was really good as a closer. He's up to an 87 of 23. I like that. We just gave him a two-year deal. I He's a free agent at the end of that. So we will have to give him a big contract at the end of that. Because I think he's definitely the future closer for this team if we could afford to keep him. Like, that FIP number is really, really good. Uh, we head to relief pitchers. Birch was solid, I think. Let's see. Looks like he was pretty solid. Let's take a look at the war. Yeah, Jack Birch was pretty solid. He's up to an 80 at 24. And we do have him locked up for a decent amount of term. Uh, Todd Goss. Eh. Not that great. He did start a game, which is interesting because he's a reliever. So maybe that's why he wasn't that good. I don't know. Uh, Luis Castillo doesn't matter. Same with Bacon. Yeah, the rest of those guys don't matter. Starting pitcher-wise, this is what I wanted to see. Garth Howe up to a 94 at 24. And obviously, next year, starting off his big contract... He uh, tied almost a career high in wins. He had a better ERA than last year, a better whip than last year. A career high in ERA and whip, I should say, for that matter. Uh, he had four on the war at 3.49 FIP. Absolutely awesome. I love Garth Howe. 20 quality starts, and he started how much games? 33. Yeah, Garth is the future for this team for sure. On the other hand, Gary McAllister, let's see how good he was. 33 games started, 14 quality starts. Okay, that's not bad, but the FIP is probably terrible, right? Yeah, it's not that great. It is his best, though, so he's improving. And then we also have Lindsey Raymond, doesn't matter. This guy was actually a, not a pick of ours, which is interesting, but he's terrible. Uh, Montero got optioned back down. He was doing very terribly. I don't know about Montero if he's even going to be a future player for this team. But there is all of that. Let's take a look at league leaders and stuff like that. This is going to be another long episode just because there was so much to look over. But I apologize about that. Let's see if any of our guys were up there in terms of the league lead. So Gelman was up there in doubles. Um, then O'Donnell was up there in triples. Love to see it. Um, anybody else up there in any categories? O'Donnell was up there in stolen bases. Um, anything else? I guess Sixo was up there in slugging percent? Never mind. Maybe it's because he's injured still. Yeah, it's probably because he's injured. Um, win-wise doesn't matter because we won't have anybody up there for pitchers yet. Gary was up there in shutouts. Gary did have two shutouts this year, so shout-out to him for doing that. Garth Howe was up there in strikeouts, number five, which is pretty dope. Um, he was also up there in complete games. He had two complete games this year. Um, he was up there in innings pitched. His whip was the fourth best in the MLB, and his pitching war was number five. I'd say he was pretty close to probably winning a Cy Young this year, almost. If he would have got the wins, that is. And nobody up there probably for batting stats. So there's that. I could take a look at the other league, but it doesn't really matter too much because we got to get through the off season. So, but let's see the regular season awards. See if anybody won anything for us. Yeah, this episode is going to be insanely long. I feel like because we do have a lot of off season to go through. Uh, Cuero was up there for Golden Glove for catchers, and Cardenas was up there for Golden Glove for first base. So that's nice. 
Anybody else up there for anything? Does not seem like it unless I am completely blind. There we go. Okay, let's get through this off season now. I think eventually I might uh, put the last half of the season as one episode and then the off season is one episode just because it seems like we're getting to a point where these episodes are going to be too long otherwise. But let's simulate to the off season. See who ends up winning the World Series. It's going to be the Padres beating the Rays. I think the Padres won last year, if I'm not mistaken, too. So that's interesting. Let's take a look at those postseason awards. Um, so, yeah, it was uh, San Diego that won last year because Ty France won the World Series MVP last year. Back-to-back -back World Series for the Padres. So Rosario is going to win the MVP. This guy's a 77 of 30, but uh, apparently he was really good. Huh. Interesting. Um, let's see. Juan Soto, the MVP in the uh, playoff. Or actually, that's the MVP. We want to go to the postseason MVP. So it was Merrill and Ramos. There you go. Okay, now that we've seen that, let's get to this offseason. Because we got a lot of work to do this offseason. And, uh, yeah, hopefully this episode's not, like, too long. We do lose a couple guys that we didn't draft these guys, but uh, we do lose like guys that played on our roster like the last few years. So as Lanta Chen and Craig Ostrander are going to retire already at this point. Interesting. Wait a second. Oh, wow. That's actually insane. I think I wrote down this draft that this guy was drafted in. Let me actually take a look quickly at this uh when was this guy drafted yep this guy was drafted no actually no he wasn't this guy or was there another cruise in this draft no this guy might have been drafted though in one of the early drafts if i'm not mistaken and he already retired because of injury so that's a bit of a concern huh that's a bit of a concern mike trout makes it into the hall of fame not a surprise though and now we got a lot of stuff to do this offseason. Okay, so let's get to these free agency portions. So we do need to bring back a couple guys here, I think. Why aren't guys like Cardinia showing up in this part? Uh, it's probably in the arbitration stage, yeah. Okay, let's get to here, though, anyways. Uh, Ronaldo Hernandez, do we need to bring him back? I don't think we do, almost. I think most of these guys will try and bring back because some of them are going to be pretty cheap options. But we need to basically just maintain our roster almost at this stage. Let's go one year at 1.9 if you want to accept that. Um, this guy thinks he's worth like $6 million. No, thank you, man. You ain't coming back for that price. And if you want $1 million, that'd be nice. But $6 million, bit too steep. Bit too steep. Eventually, we'll have prospects that uh, we drafted getting these type of contracts but not right now most of these guys that uh, were on the original team are dropping off though so which is good eventually they'll all retire and we'll have uh, our own players instead one year deal for you as well Tommy Parsons and do I want Ronaldo Hernandez back because I do have how many catchers now we have Cuero who is our MLB one for sure Thornton would be AAA, probably. There's a lot of catchers. I think I gotta let him walk. He was a Rule 5 pickup, though, so I should probably hold on to him. What does he want for a year? 4.2. He wants to go to a contender more or so, so I think I'm gonna let him walk. I don't care too much about him. We could always find more players in the Rule 5, but let's leave that. We do need to bring in a pitching coach and a farm director. So let's get that dealt with, see if we can find anybody that is relatively going to fly under the radar like this Brad Hernandez guy. Let's give him 3.8. Hopefully accept that. And we need a farm director. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even realize this. Oh, that's funny. This guy's not even a real player, a uh, real person, right? Third base coach, James James. I didn't even realize that when I signed that guy. I don't think I did, at least. That is hilarious. That is hilarious. Let's see, anybody that doesn't have any negatives here. Come on, there's got to be somebody down here. That's going to fly under the radar a little bit. Or do I have to go with a top option? Yeah, I might have to go to a top option. Let me just go back to this list again here. 
Uh, it starts right where I was. Damn, I didn't realize it was going to do that. Maybe some of these guys are real, but I don't know about that James James guy. If he is real, then it's hilarious as shit. But um, Let's go with Troy Hoskins. Both of them should accept, which is good. So let's uh, move over to free agency one. We got Hernandez. We got Hoskins. And let's stop. Yes, please, for a second. Just make sure everything's signed up. We did offer contracts to these guys, but none of them have accepted, it looks like, yet. Let's send the free agency one. And now we got the salary arbitration with our young guys. So, and we also got tendered contracts. Damn, this is going to be a long episode, guys. I really apologize about this, but let's start off with uh, these guys, because these guys are the more important ones for the future. Holy crap, Cardenas. 3.6, and then you want to head to free agency at that asking price almost. Hmm. What is five years looking like for you? I feel like since he's 25 already, he might drop off sooner than later. So I feel like four years is a sweet spot. I think I'm willing to do a four-year deal. We want to make sure we have the cap space as well to get as much people back as possible. Let's do four years at 38. See if he'll accept that. We might have to take him to arbitration, to be honest. I kind of want to commit to some of these guys already a decent amount of time. Uh, Gary, on the other hand, I'll do a three-year deal because I don't trust you. You're going to be that good. So three uh, years at like $9 million. I think that's a decent deal. Yes, he's already 27 as well, so I don't want to be giving him like a super, super long contract. So let's do a three by... Three by three, basically. Um, Steve Schneider, you should be relatively cheap. Yeah, you are. Okay, good. We're going to hold on to you for three years as well. Actually, you're 25. Let's do a four-year. No, four years. It adds an extra 400,000. Three years at 8.5. We'll do that. And the rest of these guys should be more cheaper. Did I even draft this Jefferson Cuero guy? I don't remember. I don't think I drafted him, but I feel like I got him maybe in the Rule 5. He's pretty solid. Um, Two years, we'll give you the two years. Because we don't have a catcher that's ready yet for the MLB. So you're going to be a nice player to keep on to for now. Ollie Gelman, another important player. Oh, wow. Go to three years and he wants 8.8. .8. I guess we'll do the two years. For Ollie for now. Just because that asking price afterwards is a little bit high. At least for now. Um, the rest of these guys pretty much will be relatively cheap, I think. Raymond. Yeah, you're cheap. We'll give you the 1.4. Bill O'Donnell, another one of these kind of players. Three plus years, he wants 2.8 a year. Um, I could lock him up for a four-year deal. Yeah, I'm going to lock him up for four years. I'm going to commit to some of these young guys a little bit. And then everybody else will get one-year deals because these guys we didn't draft. But I am very excited for the future of this team if we get everybody locked up for what we're trying to get them locked up for. Sato, Briggs. Some of these guys I probably don't even need to bring back, but might as well bring them back for now. And if we need to cut them, so be it. There you go. One year for you as well. So there's all that. Tendered contracts. Let's get through this. So yeah, Ken Roberts still doesn't want a lot. So we'll just give him what he's asking for. Most of these guys are going to be relatively cheap. Because they all are still kind of like AAA, AA players. But some of them will probably be in the majors. Steiner, how long does he have left in before he's a free agent? Still quite a bit of term. Nice. I do like that. I do like that quite a bit too. It's going to be very exciting, I think, uh, these next few years because we are getting to that point where this team is going to start winning a lot more games than they used to, I'd say. Uh, Buster Crossens, we don't have a shortstop prospect. I'll hold on to you for two years. Why not? Why not? Well, I do have shortstop prospects, but they're not as good. Um, actually, there was uh, Pinheiro, who's a shortstop prospect. So Buster Cross will be like a number two shortstop, but I don't think that's a bad thing. Uh, Fletcher Hoffman will give you a one-year deal. 
He's probably one of our worst prospects, but still, he might play in the majors at some point. We're getting to that stage, though, where pretty much a lot of these guys that were signing in the offseason are players we drafted, though, which is great. Because I would rather these guys than, obviously, the players that we started off this uh, franchise mode with that are all terrible. But hopefully we could hit 60 wins next season. That is the goal. Um, if we hit like 70 wins even, that would be nice. But I don't think we're going to hit 70 yet. I think we definitely still have a ways away before we get to that point. But it depends on if we have some good drafts ahead of us. Which we should probably get some good drafts soon. That's my guess. But then again, this game might just keep throwing trash uh, bags at me pretty much. <laughs> Uh, I hope we could get some good prospects in again. So that way we could at least like uh, solidify our future a little bit more with this team. Because obviously in a sense, if we don't have a deep enough prospect pool, we might honestly have like a couple years where we make the playoffs or one year only where we make the playoffs. And then afterwards, if we lose big players to free agency, then we get into a little bit of a territory where we might not have the players to replace those guys. And we need to have those players to replace those kind of guys. Like one six over tires, for example, who is going to replace him? Once uh, Cardenas retires, that type of thing. Garth Howe. Like, we definitely need to have ourselves another really good pitcher prospect in the future, at least, who will take over for Garth Howe once Garth Howe's contract is end ended and he decides to call it quits. Which, hopefully, he um, ends up staying here for this entire career. Uh, One-year deal for all these guys, because I don't think most of these guys are going to be here much longer. At some point, we'll have a lot of guys that we drafted in there instead of them. Should be able to afford everybody too, which is good. Because we only uh, dished out a couple big contracts. Because we are trusting in the young guys on this team to take this team to the next level. Which I think we're definitely on the right path. Is just still, like I said, about finding another good draft where we could draft a guy that's going to grow rapidly quick. Obviously, we do need to also have some cap space because next offseason, I believe, is when we have to give Sixto a very big contract. And he's going to be getting Garth Howe type money, maybe even more than that. I don't know how the uh, pitcher to uh, batter ratio is for money, but there we go. Let's sign those all back up. There we go. And let's go to our 40-man roster. We will add Ken Robert to our 40-man. Other than that, I don't know if there's anybody else that needs to be added. So let's go to closers and add you to our 40-man there, Ken. You will probably be in the MLB next season. The rest of the players that it's listing aren't really that important. So I don't think there's anybody else that is important enough to add to our um, to our team. Because or else they probably would have listed them. Like, these guys all have potential, but they're all really low overalls and already 30-plus uh, years of age. So, we do have 10 spots available on our 40-man roster, which is good, too. Um, so, we have that. Let's advance a few days, see if those guys that we gave arbitration or gave contracts to about the arbitration accept any of these contracts. Got to go a couple of days here to see if they accept. Uh, they're still thinking about it, a lot of them. Hopefully they do accept, because obviously, like I said, those guys are very important to the future of this team. Looks like some of them are accepting that it's good. So we'll go one other day here. Let's see. Four more players still holding out, and it's the four guys that are on the main roster. Cardenas would be here for four years if we get him. McAllister for three, Schneider for three. And Cuero for two. So we did get Gelman and McDo uh, and uh, what's his name back? The other outfielder. Um, okay, yeah, we're getting everybody, it seems like, right now, which is good. Let's keep advancing one day at a time just to make sure we are getting them. Those three guys are still holding out a little bit longer. Let's see what we're working with. Still haven't accepted. Come on, boys, just accept, please. Okay, so we did get McAllister to accept, so now it's down to Cardenas and Cuero. Cardenas and Cuero. Still holding out a little bit longer. Cardenas is thinking about his options. Um, no, I do not. I don't care about the rest of that because the Rule 5 stuff is set up properly. Why aren't you guys accepting yet? Come on. 
You gotta accept Cardenas, especially you. Cuero is not as important because I didn't draft him, but still. Okay, so we got them all, I think. Wait, no, Cardenas is still holding out. Come on, Cardenas, one more. Just sign the contract. There you go, now he's accepted. So now we have everybody signed on this team decently long term. The contract is a little bit expensive for Cardenas, 9.5, but for what he does batting average wise, I have no complaints about signing that contract. So there is that. Let's get to the next stage of free agency and get through the rest of this offseason as fast as possible because this episode's probably around 40 minutes at this stage. I do record in two parts just to make sure we do not have this freeze. So. And then I'm going to have to put it together, but more likely this episode's already over 40 minutes. Okay, we are at this stage now. Let's into winter meetings. We are getting close to being done this offseason. Okay, Rule 5 draft. Let's see what we're getting. Oh, yeah, the draft lottery. This is a new screen that got added with the most recent updates. So we do also have this. So let's get into the 2030 draft lottery and see where we're going to be drafting. We have the best odds. Tied with the Boston Red Sox and the Philadelphia Phillies. Let's simulate this draft lottery and see where we finish. Let's see where we finish. I've never even seen the screen yet, so this is my first time seeing this. I'm very excited to see where we finish off. Oh, it's probably just going to show this and then it's going to show everything result-wise. Yeah, it does. Oh, we fell from 1 to 5. And the Diamondbacks move up 14 spots to number 2. Reds move up 4 spots. That's unfortunate. So we have the number five pick, but hopefully uh, uh, the Reds make a mistake at number one. Damn, that sucks that we fell back that far, but there is what that new draft lottery results screen is like. Pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. Forgot that it was in the offseason because I saw a tweet from uh, Mills about it, so that's how I knew about this screen. Okay, do we want to take anybody in the Rule 5 draft? Um, let's see. Starting pitcher wise, we could take a starting pitcher, but they're all in their thirties. Another reliever that's twenty four and seventy three overall. Doug Rubel. How good is his stats? K's nine's good, huh? That's kind of an intriguing one, because we don't have a lot of relief pitcher prospects, so he would be a welcome addition. But I could probably take him with another pick if I want to. Let's just take a look at what else there is out there. Fernando Nieves is a first baseman. That wouldn't be a bad option behind Cardenas, but... Hmm. He's already 27. Uh, nothing really there for second base. Third base-wise, there's a 23-year-old that's 72. Don't really need one. Shortstop-wise, there's another shortstop we could take, but then again, these guys are 30. Don't really need them. Uh, don't really need them. A potential at 29. No, thank you. <laughs> and B potential at uh, 30. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for the uh, for that other relief pitcher. Might as well t keep taking younger relief pitchers that are kind of average overall wise because at least it makes our relief pitcher pull a little bit better. As you can see right now, this guy would already be tied with Todd Goss as one of our best relief pitchers. So, yeah, let's take uh, Doug Rubel. And then the rest of this draft, I'm not going to take anybody. Okay, so there is the Rule 5. I think that was a good one for us just to get ourselves some more relievers. Is any team actually going to take three people? No. Okay. There is that. Let's get to the next part of this, which is, I believe, just getting right up to spring training. And we're going to take a look at what we have roster-wise and also what uh, the top prospects are in the MLB. But I think our team is definitely going to have a better year next year, but I could be wrong. Let's get the rest of this done. We have everybody already signed, so that's good. Sim to spring training. And there we go. We are at spring training. Let's take a look at what our roster is currently looking like. Uh, let's go to actually the... Uh, yeah, let's go via the lineup screen and stuff like that. So obviously like Trevino, Gelman, Cardenas, Schneider, Pinero, Cuero, O'Donnell, Pip will be in our lineup. Steiner will probably be in our lineup or somewhere around at least. Sixto will be here. I don't know why he's on the bench right now, but oh well, maybe it's because of his injury last year. Uh, Buster Cross will be up here. 
So there is that. And then we go to our pitching rotation. Obviously, Garth Howe, Gary McAllister. Uh, Todd Goss is not going to be a starting pitcher. We could always add more people to our 30, our 40 man roster. Almost a 30 man roster. Goddamn. But here's what we're working with. Let's just go through each position so I can show you guys. So there's starting pitcher, relief pitchers. If you think anybody that is not in the MOB should get called up, let me know. Also, I forgot to mention some of these guys. If you think they should get potential upgrades, let me know. For example, if you think Gary McAllister, Darren Poles, Brian Moore should get a potential upgrade, Bobby Hyde, let me know. Because if there's anybody that needs upgrades, then we could do that, or downgrades even for that matter. Like Dennis Lake is already at his max potential, I believe. Does he get a an overall boost or like a potential boost to like a 90 instead of an 87, since he was an All Star last year? Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't know if there's anybody that deserves an upgrade yet. I could be wrong. Does Pip deserve a downgrade? <laughs> Does Schneider deserve a downgrade after that year? Like, does Schneider get uh, demoted to a C potential? He is a 79 now, though, which is nice. <clears throat> Pinero already has good potential, but I don't know if he'll reach it. Same with Steiner. They had good years last year, so. How much? Yeah, Sixto is going to have his offseason where he's going to get paid the big bucks. I am excited about that and nervous at the same time how much it's going to cost us, but there we go. So if you think any of those guys deserve an upgrade as well, let me know. And yeah, 6 Trevino, Pip. Damn, yeah, that's going to be an expensive offseason. I'm just curious on this right now. If I was to do like a 10-year deal like how... And then I was going to go front-loaded. What would he be after? He'd be after, like it seems like kind of close to max contract... I don't even have enough budget for the max offer yet, or what? I don't know. Because I think we would definitely do a max offer on him. Definitely. Like, we, if we give him, like, 260 to 75, something like that, for 10 years, he'd be 34 by the end of it. But he'd also be getting a cheaper contract, so... Basically, 275 is where I think we'd be able to get him. But I don't know if we'll be able to afford that right now. So basically, it'd be $27.5 million a season. The most we can offer a season is 27.72, I think. If I'm not mistaken. I don't know if I could even offer him that contract. But if I can, let me know what you guys think. Because I think we definitely need to sign him for a lot. And obviously, this uh, offseason, we also have to worry about Trevino and Pip. But should be decent enough to get those guys back. So there's that. Let's take a look at the top prospects in the MLB at the moment. Pena is number one for Texas. Yeah, that guy's going to be pretty good. Uh, let's see what else is up here. Any guys for us, or do we not have anybody in the top 50 anymore? Pablo Silva still makes it, but he has fallen to number 28 now. We will probably have to reorganize who's in double and who's in triple at some point. There is that. It's the only one prospect in the top 50. Just eh, not great. So there's that, and I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. So anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Vancouver Rain Draft Glory franchise mode. So in next episode, we will probably dish out some big contract extensions if you guys think I could already afford it. Or if not, we'll have to wait till the off season to do so. And then, obviously, we will uh, get into starting simulating the season and scouting out this upcoming draft. And hopefully, it's a good draft for us. Hopefully, we get some good, good prospects in. But otherwise, I think we're on a good path. And I think this team should be starting to win a decent amount of games. Because if you look, like in these next three years even, we should have a pretty good roster pretty much set up at that point. So, let me see down below. And I'll see you guys next time.